The Colorado River is the lifeblood for 40 million people in seven states and drives a $1.4 trillion economy. All of our wildlife has to have this water, whether it's deer and elk and moose, they all have to live off this. If you have healthy fish, that means you have healthy water. A lot of people think water is just a never-ending resource and that just everybody has access to it, whether it's drinking water in your faucet or irrigation or, or public access, and that's not the case. If you've eaten lettuce or carrots in the winter months, it's likely that those vegetables have been irrigated with Colorado River water. In the United States, one-third of the Latino population relies on the Colorado River, and then there's also 29 tribes that depend on the Colorado River Basin as well. I didn't realize how much being outside and being in nature makes a difference for my own mental health. And then the connection to my dad. He taught me how to fly fish, and it's given me that connection to my dad that I know that I'm gonna be able to take to my grave. My family is called Colorado Home for six generations. My family's been farmers, hunters, and educators uh, throughout our time here. Save the Fraser is sort of our motto, and that's because it is the headwaters for the Colorado. This river now loses about 50% of its flow to Denver water. So that just tells you sequentially what's happening to the Colorado and why Lake Mead and those places are going dry. We have to come together and figure out how are we going to support our farmers, our agriculture? How are we going to support the population? But the other part of it is climate change. Right now, this water temperature, I'm sure, is well below 50. Uh, when we get into late summer and you start getting water temperatures in the afternoon up around 70 degrees, that's fish kill. And you didn't have that 25 years ago. So the water decisions that we make today are going to affect human, animal, and environmental health going forward in and out of the basin for several generations to come. It's just going to have tremendous effect on the rural population and how they live life currently, but it's also going to affect our urban populations who rely on that water. I have a once in a lifetime opportunity to be up here a lot and enjoy public access, enjoy this amazing river. But I think if we can come together, collaborate, really put some good, thoughtful laws and regulations in place, I think we can take care of it and conserve it.